Okay, guys, welcome today. We are so super excited to have Marisa Murgatroyd. Did I say that right? You did. Okay, good. <laughs> um, we're excited to have her here with us, and we're going to talk. We're going to go through Marisa's recent launch of Experience Product Masterclass, which we were affiliates for. I'm sure you've probably heard a little bit about that. Matt and I have been talking about it a lot and uh, had a great time. And Marisa, we were talking about it afterwards and you know, just kind of recapping uh, personally with our team. And we basically said, hey, well, let's, let's have Marisa come on and, and hear about it from her, her side of things and, and just find out how things went. So thank you so much for being on. Thank you for taking the time to, to visit with us today. Of course. And you were a big support in the launch. And I know you are the affiliate masters. So it's kind of fun <laughs> to see how we did from your perspective, too. Because from my perspective, we're always just bungling along, doing right. the best that we can while things are just going crazy because it's a launch. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things we talked about. And I want to ask you about that here in a little bit. But I just kind of wanted to jump right in and just say, you know, Marisa, you said that this was your first million dollar launch. And so my, my first question to you is, what was the difference to you from your perspective between a million dollar launch and not a million dollar launch? What did you see from your side? Hmm. Well, I think... A couple of things. One is simply it was the second time that we launched this product rather than the first time. And simply knowing what we were selling mm -hmm. um, helps a lot because having sold it for the first time, we knew it was going to be really, really good. But once we've delivered it and we've seen results and we can stand behind it and we've got the case studies and we've got everything else and we had proven numbers, it meant we could go to town with, say, things like affiliate prizes. We could put I, we had over $262,000, I think, in cash and prizes on the line, which I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing if it weren't proven, right? Right, right. So just simply having that gave us the confidence to take bigger risks. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was really different is um, we were really getting noticed by a lot of the big players. So I had lots of people from Christian Michelson, Bill Barron, Justin Livingston, Todd Brown. They were like texting me and advising me all the way through. And I didn't even ask them for support. It's right. like everybody was rallying around us and wanting to see us win. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize before when I was doing smaller launches that everyone's out there watching what it is that you're doing, and both from their own perspective, but people want to see you succeed and win. And I didn't realize that that was the case. And that mm -hmm. felt super good to have all these people who were busy people with, you know, whose time is super valuable, just rallying behind me and hoping to see me win. And then of course, I mean, we had something like 170 pages of emails, just one Google doc of all the communications that were going out. It right. was a massive team effort. We spent, you know, $40,000 on videos and really um, upped the production of everything because I think we're in a time where if you're not innovating, if you're not producing kind of really interesting, cutting edge stuff, people are tuning out fast. And a lot of other launches this year were really actually declining in a big way, like 50 to mm -hmm. 70%. And hours increased. We kept our conversion rate between last launch and this launch. We saw huge engagement on the videos. We saw great opt-in rates. We really performed across the board. Mm -hmm. Well, you said a couple of things that, that I really want to jump into that I think are, are super important. But before we do, I think now that we got that out of the way, because I think that was important to, to hear what that difference was, can you explain a little bit for maybe somebody that, that didn't see the emails that we shared and didn't see the sales page, tell us what Experience Product Masterclass is, who it's for, and, and kind of what you're trying to accomplish through it. Sure. Well, the mission behind the Experience Product Masterclass is for our students to design, market, and make $2,000 or a whole lot more from an experienced product in 10 weeks or less. And you may be asking, well, what's an experienced product? So mm -hmm. basically, I've been innovating a lot on how to create products that are super sticky and hook your customers, students, and clients on taking action, getting results, and buying from you over and over again. Because I heard that 97% of people who buy information-based products don't succeed and don't get results. And that's a failure rate that's equivalent to like the insurance agency, which is designed to cheat people. <laughs> right, so how right. we, as product creators who are, care about our audience really get away with having such poor performance on our products. And when I've been asking my peers about it, they all just said, well, it's just kind of the way things are. And not everyone's meant to be successful, but I didn't really buy into that. And so I thought, well, as a product creator, it's my job to really do everything in my power to get someone across the finish line from mission to mission accomplished without taking responsibility for them. Because as Jim Rohn says, you can't hire someone else to do your push-ups for you, right? Right, right. So I started to experiment a lot, looking at the worlds of video games and entertainment and reality TV and just adult curriculum design and seeing how could I create products that were almost addictive in terms of inspiring people to take action 
mm-hmm. if you can see something like Pokemon Go sweeping the world and mm-hmm. having people double park their cars, get out to chase stupid little virtual creatures, I mean, we could do something where we can get people hooked to changing their lives in the way that they actually want to change their lives, right? And that was mm-hmm. the basic idea and principle. And we've basically been able to turn on their heads, the industry stats, and see participation and engagement rates from like 70 to 92%, which is really huge. So people mm-hmm. are completing these programs, they're getting results, they're telling people about them, and that just has an upward growth for our business and our customers' lives. That's awesome, because I know that's one of the things that we found with, with, our, with our courses. You know, so many people is like, yeah, I created a course, that's fantastic, but you know, most of us aren't in this business just to sell a course. Like we want to make, we want to cause that change. We want to affect change in our, our clients' lives. And so that's what we, we really love from our standpoint is being able to, to, to promote that to our audience and say, Hey, this is something that, that not only will help you create a course, but it'll help you create a course that actually makes a difference and, and has an impact on people rather than just getting you some money, which obviously that's important too. But, um, you know, it's more important that people get the results that you're promoting, promoting. So Totally, which does actually bring me to one point that I think is important is um, right now we're such a saturated market and that you really do need to have product differentiation. So yeah. if you're just selling, say, a product about creating products without a hook that's as compelling as the Experience Product Master class, it's going to be hard to be competitive because people have just seen it, done it, been there. So really, mm-hmm. we're in an age where the market sophistication is higher enough where the differentiation has to be really spot on and dialed in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that we loved as we're watching the launch from our side is, you know, even through the the affiliate side of things and with the affiliates, you did a fantastic job of doing that, of of making it different, of making it fun. And that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Um, we talked about in one of our recaps about how you d- you did a really good job, you and your team did a good job of what we call getting affiliates sucked into the vortex, getting to this point where it's like, oh my gosh, we have to send another email. Oh my gosh, where are we at on the leaderboard? Where are we at? And, and really getting to that point. So my question to you is, and I think I know the answer, but is that something you did purposely with affiliates? And if so, what did you do? Well, I think there's a lot to it. So one is that not everybody is motivated exclusively by money and by prizes. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot of people really want to get excited about the product and excited about the marketing materials because ultimately they're sending their audience to you. Sure. And if your squeeze pages suck, if your videos suck, or if they're just like, you know, right. well, people aren't going to get excited about it. So no matter how big the, the carrot, you know, they're still not going to get stoked about it. Mm -hmm. So part of what I was doing is making materials that were so compelling in and of itself that a lot of my partners actually ended up watching all of my training videos and all of that themselves, not just out of curiosity. They were genuinely interested in what we had to share. The other thing is, is I was actually really sharing the engagement on the trainings. So Mm -hmm. I do think that engagement on trainings and videos and things is an indicator of what sales are going to be like later on in the process. Sure. I've been watching the launches of some big players. They were getting z- almost no engagement um, on their launches this year. And the engagement they were getting were coming from like random countries like Nigeria and stuff like right. that. So I was like, okay. So the only people commenting are Nigerians. You know, right. how good is this launch going to do? So by featuring that and actually sharing how people were already transformed just by the marketing, that's letting people know, okay, we've got kind of a hot topic here on our hands as well. So I wasn't just focusing on the $262,000 in cash and prizes. I was actually focusing on we're going to make a difference in people's lives and look at how engaged they already are. And just this marketing is changing their lives and changing this industry. And also the fact that this is a topic that's not just going to change the lives of our customers, but that's going to up-level the industry in a way that we really need to Mm up-level. No, I think that those are great points. And I think one of the things from our side that we saw that really helped us kind of get sucked in as an affiliate was you know, you and Terry were really good at sending these personal emails. Like it was like, we'd get one from you and then we get another one like 20 minutes later from Terry. And like, I, I thought it was so cool because when Terry would send them, I don't know if she did this purposely or if it was like planned, but it would be just the subject line would be whatever she was going to say. And that was like all there was in the email. And so it's like, oh, you know, um, I can't remember what it was like, Justin Livingston made a sale. You guys are tied. And it was just like, you know, Matt and I are texting each other back and forth. Like, oh my gosh, what can we do? Justin's tied us. Dang it. What do we got to do now? And And so I think those type of, individual touches made a huge difference for us uh, from the affiliate side is just, you know, having that mindset. So my question to you is in the middle of a launch, you're so busy. There's so many things that are going on. You know, I I kind of think of it like, you know, that the example of a duck paddling, you know, you look Mm -hmm. at a duck and it's all calm, but underneath they're just paddling like crazy. And I know that's what a launch is like. And that was the fun thing for us. We knew kind of 
in theory, what you were going through. So how did you balance everything else you were doing at the launch with yeah. also being super accessible to affiliates? Yeah, well, I mean, that's a great question. It's a personal pet peeve of mine where I feel like, um, you know, it's a big deal for me to go to bat for someone. It's actually a yeah. massive investment to, you know, drive traffic to someone's product that we could be driving to our products instead. So mm -hmm. when, for example, partners take for granted my participation, um, because I don't really participate for the money. I participate for the relationship because I believe in the product and all of these things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine and it's not very motivating. So one big partner of mine actually hasn't asked if I wanted to promote, but just tagged me on a Facebook group alongside 50 other people the other day. Are you coming in and promoting my launch? And I had an internal conflict, but I was like, no. <laughs> right. I mean, she didn't even, this person didn't even take the time to contact me personally by email or by text. So when I was rounding up my partners, I personally emailed all of them and I kept a detailed spreadsheet with all of my notes. I emailed mm -hmm. 150 people in a single day. And then I kept emailing them until I heard back. And there's maybe 20 or 30 that I didn't hear back from, but the rest wrote back to me. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think we had 60 or 70 say yes. And um, maybe 40 to 50 really, you know, followed through on that. Sure. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers at this point or haven't really counted. And that's pretty solid. And then for the ones that, you know, said no, I kept track of, is it a no forever? Cause they're switching business models. They no longer do affiliate promotions or is it just a no because this particular launch didn't work. And mm -hmm. the next time around, I'm going to write them all personally again to invite them because really many of these partners are promoting based on our relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's important to realize that's just as important for them. You know, of course, some of them want reciprocal promotions. Others just believe in the product and want the money and whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's important to recognize that. And so even though I've got an affiliate manager, I'm still actually the person who's um, getting the initial yes in that commitment. Mm -hmm. And because of that too, I think that's part of the reason we had so much more engagement and involvement. I didn't just go through an affiliate manager to try to get that initial commitment. And then even... After the first PLC, this kind of happened accidentally. Terry had surgery that she didn't oh, no. tell me about <laughs> um, ahead of time because she thought it was like this quick outpatient thing. Apparently, they told her she was going to be out for like four or five days and she didn't tell <laughs> So she had this surgery and all of a sudden she's like completely like out and can't do anything. And I'm like, okay, you know, this is right after PLC one. So I write all of the partners. I basically like take right. it on myself to write to everybody, you know, and I'm like, okay, this is not okay this early in the launch to the part, you know, radio silence on the sure. line. So I just spent half a day, I think, engaging partners and, you know, that spiked over to the PLC too. And I did it personally. And then what happened, I think leading into the reopen, we had, you know, 24 hours to plan. I got like 15 partners to commit to the reopen. I only had prizes for 3000 2000 and $1,000. But a lot of people really struggle to get anyone to commit for the reopen. Yeah. But I got, you know, quite a lot of people to commit. And we had a, over 30% of sales came on the reopen too, which pushed us to over 1.1 million. And I think if I, mm -hmm. again, I reached out to every partner personally and said, you know, we're introducing this nine pay option and then even some of the partners that said no, I think Bill Barron said no. Um, he looked like he was getting the most sales on the reopen. So I basically wrote to him and said, hey, you know, if you send an email, you're going to get this $3,000 prize, right? Um, but you're not eligible for it right now, but you've got the most sales. So then they sent an email. They ended up doubling their sales on the reopen. So it's things like that of paying attention and really writing to people and being on top of it that can make a massive difference. Um, in your launch. And as a product creator, I would actually argue that, you know, I've got my two most important functions are actually um, supporting the affiliates. And the content at this point is done. I mean, we have the campaign right. dialed in. Of course, there are little pivots and things like that. And um, engaging with the audience. So mm -hmm. certain things that I saw is like people engaging on my blog or in the comments, I sometimes would ping them or, or something and then they would buy. So I think I mm -hmm. got a handful of sales just like that, but liking and engaging. I had a, we had over like 3000 comments on the launch. So I stopped being able to do it. So my tribe, right. my, my whole team had to rally around and take shifts to kind of be able to get through liking and come returning all mm -hmm. the comments. Unfortunately, the way Facebook comments is anymore, you don't get the same viral Viral, virality that you used to get, right? Virality, right. virality. There we go. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>
Yeah, I think, you know, well, first off, what I got of that whole thing was it's your fault that we didn't win the first place prize on the reopen. So we'll make a note of that. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm out for myself here. Not for you. <laughs> I know. Let's I get know. that clear. <laughs> you said that. And I was like, oh, that's why Bill beat us. Dang it. Dang him. But no, nah, it's okay. Um, but I think that's, you know, it's true. And one of the things as you were talking through that is, you know, we hear from so many people either they're just starting their affiliate program or have been doing it for a while. And the hardest thing for them is recruiting and getting affiliates. And I think so many of them look at that as not an investment in time. I mean, like you said, you spend a whole day emailing these people. So for someone that's maybe starting out or somebody that feels they're too busy, you, you kind of already hit on this, but is there anything else you would say about the value of taking the time to actually reach out individually and, and talk to them individually? 